I preach this morning in the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Today is the second Sunday after Pentecost, and in this season after Pentecost, we continue to look at the effect that the outpouring of the Holy Spirit has on our lives. And the outpouring of the Holy Spirit has a great effect on our lives. For that which was dead is raised to new life. That which has been bound in in shackles for so many years has been loosed and set free. That which has been enclosed in the dark has now been set loose in the light. And that which has been tormented by demons is now set free from the power of demons to serve the Lord Jesus Christ and to share what God has done. In this season after Pentecost, we look specifically at the nature of the Holy Spirit and the work of God the Holy Spirit to fill us once again with vision and purpose to walk in the counsel of the Lord, to walk in the provision of the Lord, and to trust in the Lord for everything in our lives. And today we see a garrison demoniac who has been troubled for years by demons. He has been held captive and controlled by these demons for years, and Jesus comes to set the oppressed free. And that's what our lesson is about today. So I invite you to take out your Bible and to follow along. It's found on page 1028 in the chair Bible in front of you, page 1028 in the chair Bible in front of you, Luke chapter 8, if you have your own Bible. Either way, please do follow along. A special welcome to those of you joining us online, Channel 5, The Wave here in Greenville. We're so glad that you are tuning in this morning as well. Luke chapter 8, we begin in verse 26. Then they sailed to the country of the Gerasenes, which is opposite Galilee. When Jesus had stepped out on land, there met him a man from the city who had demons. For a long time he had worn no clothes, and he had not lived in a house but among the tombs. Now, Jesus and his disciples have left the side of the Galilee to the side of the Gerasenes. The side of Galilee is Jewish territory. The side of the Gerasenes is Gentile territory. They have left from one end of the Lake of Galilee to the other end of the Lake of Galilee because, remember, Jesus' mission is to seek and to save the lost. He has come not for only the Jews, but for all people, that all who believe in him and turn to him, as we'll see the garrison demoniac in our lesson today, that all who turn to him in faith, all who put their faith and trust in his power and authority will be set free. And that is the provision of the gospel for us. Jesus has sailed from one end of Galilee to the other because he's on a mission to seek and to save the lost. And so he comes into the garrison territory, which is Gentile territory. And before he even steps out of the boat, one foot on land, there comes to him a man who is tormented with demons. He had no clothes and he had not lived in a home, but he lived among the tombs. This guy lost everything. He lost his home. He lost his family. He lost everything. His place in the community. He lost his name. He lost his identity. He lost his voice. And when you lose all of that, when you have nothing, when the devil strips everything from your life, there's really nowhere else to turn but to the one who has the power to set you free. He lost everything, including his voice, because when he speaks, it's not his voice But it's the demon speaking through him, verse 28. And when he saw Jesus, he cried out and fell down before him and said with a loud voice, What have you to do with me, Jesus, son of the most high God? I beg you, do not torment me. For he had commanded the unclean spirit to come out of the man. And for many a time it had seized him. He was kept under guard and bound with chains and shackles, but he would break the bonds and be driven by the demon into the desert. He has complete control of this man. He has taken away his home. He has taken away his identity. He has taken away his place in the community. He has taken away his voice because Jesus finds him completely occupied by not one demon, 
but by a legion of demons. Because not only is his voice gone, his identity is gone too. Verse 30, Jesus then asked him, what is your name? And he said, legion, for many demons had entered him, and they begged him not to command them to depart into the abyss. And there was a large herd of figs feeding there on the hillside, and they begged him to let them enter these. So he gave them permission. And the demons came out of the man and entered the pigs, and the herd rushed down the steep bank into the lake and drowned. The demons have occupied every part of this man's life, taking away his voice, taking away now his identity. Jesus asks him, what is your name? What is your name? And in response, again, the man is not speaking. The demon is speaking through him and he says, legion. Now in Roman time, that would mean 6,000 soldiers. Legion is not a name. Jesus asks him his name and he responds Legion, which means there are 6,000 demons, soldiers that are demons that have occupied this man's life. 6,000 demons. Jesus asked him, what is your name? And in response, the demons say, Legion, because they want Jesus to know who they think has all authority and power. And yes, for a time, this man has been tormented and tormented over and over again. Everything absolutely stripped from him. But when Jesus shows up, when Jesus sails from one end of Galilee to the other, when he comes looking for you, he's come to set you free. And the devil begged Jesus not to let them go into the abyss. That's their prerogative, and that will be their prerogative as they end their days in hell itself. The devil and all of his demons are in the abyss. They are roaming to and fro in this world, but they beg Jesus, do not allow us, do not command us into the abyss. And the very thing that they begged for is the very thing that Jesus did. And he commanded the devil and all of the demons to come out of that man and into the pigs. And the herd of pigs rushed down the steep bank into the lake and drowned. Now, You might be asking, why pigs? In our 21st century animal-loving culture, why pigs? Why, Jesus, would you take this man's occupation, these innocent pigs, and why would you command the devil and all of his demons, 6,000 of them, into the pigs and to drown? Well, you have to understand two things about Roman culture. In Jewish culture, the pigs were seen as unclean animals. You would not touch them, nor would you eat them. They were unclean. You don't touch, you don't eat. And number two, the devil, it was thought, would be killed in water. Hence why they ask, do not command us into the abyss. Two of those realities in Jewish culture would suggest why Jesus chose pigs. There has nothing to do with the animal culture that we love. It has everything to do with they are an unclean animal. We do not touch them. We do not eat them. So it stands to reason, why not send these evil spirits into the unclean, not this man who is going to be pure in a moment. They are unclean, not this man. These pigs are unclean, not the one whom I have chosen to redeem. And if the enemy wants to command me not to let him go into the abyss because he knows his prerogative after all, and that will indeed be the place where he spends for all eternity in the hell of fire itself, why not then send the demons into the water where they will be done in this man's life? You see, Jesus has come to set you free. Jesus has come to set this man free. And when Jesus does set this man free... People are not going to share in faith what they have seen. People are struck in fear what they have experienced. Verse 34. When the herdsmen saw what had happened, they fled and told it in the city and in the country. Then people went out to see what had happened. And they came to Jesus and found the man from whom the demons had gone, sitting at the feet of Jesus, clothed and in his right mind, and they were afraid. And those who had seen it told them how the demon-possessed man had been healed. Then all the people of the surrounding country of the Gerasenes asked him to depart from them. 
for they were seized with great fear. So we got into the boat and returned. The herdsmen are wondering, hey, Jesus, what did you do here with our pigs? Instead of looking at the miracle that is unfolding before them, they actually see something completely different. Because what they see now is Jesus who has all authority and all power to command even the winds to be silent and the demons to come out of this man who has been tormented for year after year. This authority, this power from all eternity that has been given to God in Christ Jesus that's now manifest into their present makes them very uncomfortable. Because the way in which Jesus has changed this life is the very way in which Jesus wants to change their lives. But they don't want it. They want to hold on to the control. They want to do things and lead their pigs and their economy the way in which they want to do life and lead their own economy. They are saddened in heart, not because of this man who was set free, but because their pigs have been killed. They miss the miracle because they want control. You see, there's one of two responses when Jesus shows up and works miracles in our lives. Fear or faith. Fear or faith. The people were struck in fear because they saw Jesus change someone's life and they knew that Jesus would be coming for them. We're the same way. Why are we struck in fear? Because we're comfortable. We like to do things the way we've always done them. We like to say the things we've always said. We like to do the things that we've always done. We like to hold on to a control so that we can feel like we are in control and we fail to realize who has all authority and all power to transform and change every part of our lives. And when you know that Jesus Christ wants to change every part of you, the human condition will reach out to say, no, that's mine. I want control. I want to lead my kids that way. I want to steward my finances in that way. I want to make decisions myself. I want that for myself. No. And while the crowds were led away in fear, the man from whom the demons had gone was led in faith. Verse 38. And the man from whom the demons had gone, begged that he might be with him. But Jesus sent him away, saying, Return to your home and declare how much God has done for you. And he went away, proclaiming throughout the whole city how much Jesus had done for him. Jesus has come to set this garrison demoniac free. 6,000 demons, a legion, taken everything out of his life, his family, his name, his reputation, his voice, tormenting this guy for all day and night. And there were people that were not rejoicing in the work of God. But when your life is touched... When your life is transformed, when your family is restored, when your children come back home, when your provision comes before you as you've been praying day and night that God would provide for every one of your needs, when God sends that lost son or daughter back home to rejoin your family once again, when God breaks the addiction in your life to restore you to health once again, when God cleanses you from sickness in your life and all illness, when God touches your life, when the Holy Spirit transforms you, There is only one response for that which has been touched by the divine, and that is rejoicing. What those have been struck in fear, joy and rejoicing comes with those who know the power of God and who live in the provision of God, who live in the abundance of His goodness that comes to you in Jesus Christ. Because Jesus has the power to set you free today. I don't know what demon has been tormenting you. You may have lost your name. You may have lost your reputation. You may have been categorized and labeled a failure. Whatever it is, the devil may have stripped everything of your worth in your love. But Jesus has come to restore your life today. 
For Jesus has come to destroy the power of the devil, the power of sin, death, and Satan himself. And he has come to restore you, to restore you to a bright future that he has for you, to release from you the past that torments you and the devils that occupy you, all that you may rejoice before him and the God who has redeemed you and who has set you free. What demon is controlling you today? What demon has taken possession of your heart today? Like the garrison demoniac, Jesus says to you, be gone, be free, be restored. So go, as you are freed, as you are redeemed, as you are set free from whatever demon haunts you today, go and rejoice and proclaim throughout the city what Jesus has done for you. Amen.